Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first episode of the Bedroom Super Producer Podcast. As you might have noticed, we have slacked off on videos here at DelicateBeats.com, especially on YouTube, because, well, you know, after a while, we kind of got fed up with the whole tutorial thing. Um, you wouldn't believe how awkward it is to stare at your computer screen, try to... Uh, explain what goes on in your mind while doing some technical stuff on the computer and um, after a while I got bored doing that and I wouldn't I wouldn't just put out content to put out content I'm trying to bring value to my subscribers and I didn't feel like I had it in me anymore <clears throat> fast forward a couple uh, months and here we are in 2019 and um, kind of wanted to try this new approach here where I could probably put out more content because I don't have to worry about what I look like in front of the camera all the time. And that's another aspect of filming videos and, and creating video content is you kind of become a TV personality in a, in, in, in a sense. And uh, I didn't want to have to, you know, brush my fucking hair every morning to look decent for you guys, especially for the haters who always have some fucking you know, observation on how you look, if you blink or don't blink, if uh, you look like you had, you know, uh, a 24-hour cocaine binge before filming a video where it's probably just a fucking cold and you, you slept an hour, but you still feel like you should be putting out content. So you catch my drift. At some point, it becomes very tiring to worry about how you look and not just so much how your ideas will resonate with the public. So, Randa is out of the way. We're doing podcasts this year. Uh, today I'm doing it alone. I'm JT, by the way, if you don't know me. But I'll be joined shortly by my partner at DelicateBiz.com and uh, chief, you know, sound designer, BK. He's my best friend. He's the best play bass player I've ever seen. He's uh, one of the biggest music nerds I've uh, met in my long, illustrious career. So shortly, we'll, you'll have the, uh, the chance to meet with him and hear him talk about a bunch of different subjects. But today, it's just me. And um, in the news this week, well, there was the, the NAMM show. Uh, I think it was last week. I don't know if it's over. I don't really care. Uh, but we're going to go over some of the cool piece of equipment that caught my eye and uh, see if that could make its way to your bedroom super producer studio. So um, by the way, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, the music tech review. So if you want to have more detail, you can head on to a music tech.net, which is a pretty cool magazine. I used to buy it back in the day, but uh, with the internet now, it's, it just makes no sense. So I just once in a while open a blog, there's or you know, sound on sound, whatever. But uh, in their day one article, uh, they had first and up front the Arturia Micro Freak. I was in the studio a few days ago with my buddy, Rough Sound. Shout out to Rough Sound. He's one of the best producers I know. And he just went platinum actually a week ago with uh, French rapper or Quebec rapper Loud They've just hit 100,000 copies sold of one of their singles. So that's fucking amazing. I mean, for, for a francophone rapper to hit 100,000 copies sold, this is absolutely, absolutely unheard of. And shout out to Loud too. He's a great guy. Met him once at the studio. And um, he's just such a powerful uh, and, and witty lyricist. If you understand French... You better uh, head on to Spotify or something, something like that and listen to uh, either his 56K, uh, uh, I, th I believe it's 56K, the name of the, um, like the micro album and then the, the, the real album, Une Année Record, which is just great, great album overall. So I was talking to Rough Sound and he told me he just bought a, a new synth by Arturia and he said, the micro freak and... Um, I believe I had seen like a screenshot or something and I kind of knew like the gists of what this instrument was about. But uh, today I uh, 
looked at the presentation, like the official Arturia presentation on YouTube. And I got to say, it looks pretty damn cool. You've got some, uh, you know, retro futuristic vibes with the whole build. Uh, looks uh, very light but sturdy with the metal box. You've got this uh, like note sensitive keyboard there. Being a Roly uh, owner, I'm less excited by just, you know, after touch. Uh, because the 4 or 5D, I don't know the, the name of the technology over at Roly, but it seems to me like everybody should be going that way, you know, where you have vibrato on, uh, you know, the, the, the Y axis and then maybe some uh, modulation or, or, you know, pitch bending on the X axis, you know, something like that. I would have expected something very similar with the Arturia keyboard, I guess. Uh, I guess they have a patent or something, so they can't touch that just yet. But yeah, those fake keyboards with no actual keys, being a keyboard player, I kind of find them hard to maneuver around. But uh, for people who don't actually play a whole lot of keyboard, this might be you know, a nice little uh, avenue for you guys, especially with the paraphonic mode on that keyboard, meaning that you can actually just press one key and have it play chords all over the keyboard, that's that's a pretty neat feature. So what's interesting about this instrument? Well, first and foremost, I like the uh, the idea of, you know, having digital oscillators and wavetable. Uh, I mean, I guess you can really get more modern sound because most of the times, you know, when you get those retro analog modeling type products, they don't cater too well to the new genres, you know, future bass, dubstep, these kinds of things. So maybe this little guy has what it takes to make like super modern current sounding patches as well as, you know, the, the old retro, you know, funky basses, Bruno Mars, MJ type sounds. Another cool feature about this keyboard is the the arpeggiator slash uh, sequencer in there. They have two modes again. I was looking at the website, the Arturia website, and they have the spice mode, which adjusts the level of spice in your sequence, literally spices it up, altering the parameters of the pattern without changing the pitch and creating something new, whatever that means. Uh, and then you have the second mode, which is dice, and dice is selected using the touch strip, randomizes your sequence by the amount you choose, letting you find the inspiration from the unexpected. So, whenever you have these little machines with knobs, you really get in physical contact with the music, which is something that lacks in our plug-in slash computer-based uh, age and so sometimes it's nice to just randomly make mistakes just twisting knobs away not really caring what you're looking for and finding some gems so i guess in that regard this little keyboard there has a lot a lot of potential for fortuitous mistakes and um I guess that's why they call it the micro freak because you can literally freak your music out with this thing. Another thing that I really like, I'm looking at the, uh, the, the, the page there, is the mutable instruments. So they say we've also integrated the open source plates oscillator developed by Eurorack legend mutable instruments to bring you seven additional synth modes. I'm not going to go over the, all of the seven. I've already talked about the paraphonic synth engine, which uh, creates chords. Then you have the PI.VA, the virtual analog recreating traditional synth methods. Then you've got the PI Wave Shaper, a triangular wave 
processed by wave shaping and wave folding, creating squelchy, aggressive, and often metallic tones. And um, if you're an old school cat like me, you've probably dreamed of owning a TB303 and uh, that wave shaper waveform right there. And I've heard some demos create some very, very convincing 303 type uh, acid bass lines. So I'm really still waiting for the, the comeback actually of Acid House, uh, which is, by the way, where Daft Punk started their journey. And um, yeah, I mean, 303 bass lines need to come back in force in EDM. They just sound amazingly warm and funny all at the same time, if that makes sense. And then you have the PI.FM, a simple but powerful twin operator, FM oscillator, with two sine waves modulated each other's phase to create sharp, acidic tones. So I guess you can even, you know, create bells and, and pads in, in, in a FM type fashion. And I'm a huge, huge fan of the, um, what's it called again? The, uh, that Yamaha, let me, let me just Google that thing for, for a second here. The DX7, sorry, brain fart there. Um, yeah, the DX7. So it, it looks to me like it's very, very versatile in terms of tonality and texture, which is always something you would want from a modern synthesizer. And with all of these little, you know, performance oriented features, I think you have a great, great package, something that you can take in a backpack. Uh, on the road, when you travel, when you're in the uh, the hotel room, but you still want you know something that has a lot of analog-ish character. I think that product looks great. So moving on, kudos to Arturia. Actually, I really I really dig the vibe of this product. I think they're gonna do great in terms of sales. Um, we've got the East West sounds Hollywood pop brass and for for the longest time I was looking for you know Michael Jackson type pop brass sounds uh, you don't always have you know the budget to hire a four to five piece um, orchestra to play on your track and most of the contact libraries I've come across were somehow of a programming nightmare you 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 have like a bunch of key switches and uh, I really just hate key switches I mean I'm, I'm already trying to play a, a fucking lick if you ask me to choose between bend uh, you know and, and, and swoops and and whatever vibrato legato all at the same time I just I just lose it I mean maybe it's my limitation as a keyboard player but I don't know, I, I've never stuck with one, you know, jazz slash pop uh, brass library that actually sounded full, warm, convincing. So I'm really, really curious about that East-West library. I hate their play engine. Is that the play engine? Or anyways, their sample playback engine, I hate it. I feel like... I don't know. It's not on the uh, on par with contact anytime soon. But that's okay. At least they're trying. And um but the the quality of their samples have have always been, you know, world class. So I'm expecting very high quality from the recordings and uh from the little video I watched on their uh, on the page there on Music Tech, um they have a bunch of very interesting phrases, you know, kind of the cliches of pop brass, which a guy like me needs day in and day out. Like if I want to just throw in a little bit of pop brass spice in one of my beats, this is the thing I'll be using 
every time. You can either, you know, resample yourself to not just have the out of the box loop or phrase. Uh, and they also have a bunch of playable patches. I was looking at the page on the East West site and they have, you know, all of the run of the mill articulations, sustain, staccato, falls, marcato, doits, don't know what those are, swells, rips, shakes, growls, staccato, legato, stabs, and like they said, dozens of phrases and licks. So don't know what the price of the individual library is going to be just yet. They say it's coming this spring. Um, I'm not really interested in the whole 20 bucks a month thing. I own a lot of um, East-West libraries already, and quite frankly, I don't use them anymore. Um, just because of the tedious uh, task of installing and reinstalling and updating those libraries, when it's contact, you just drag and drop the, uh, the fucking library on a hard drive and boom, you're ready to go. So that's why, in part, I hate the, the play engine. They used to be on contact a very long time ago. And I guess they were tired of uh, having native instruments eat off their profits. So that's understandable. Uh, but I might just wait to see how much it, the, the uh, individual library is going to cost. But with that being said, that's a very, very interesting product. Uh, I feel like they're not going to be alone in that uh, lane very soon. I've seen ADO put out some sax, saxophone libraries. Uh, they did not have the licks and uh, phrases. And um, that, for me, was kind of a deal breaker because I already own um, the one that comes with complete... Uh, the brass thing and I, and I tried to use it on a track last week and it just sounds so fake I don't know what it is about saxophone but it's probably the fakest sounding instrument when it comes to sample libraries maybe because it's such an expressive instrument but then again they, they get the violin right nowadays but the saxophone and trumpets pop trumpets Never heard something very convincing yet. And um, yeah, the other thing is, the, the last point I want to make about these, um, these libraries is that uh, like, I own a bunch of brass, like orchestral brass libraries, but you just can't use these in a pop or EDM context. So Hollywood pop brass, very much welcome uh, on my side. Can't wait to try it out. Next up, they have this uh, controller here, which is called the Presonus Atom. Uh, so f for those uh, Studio One users out there, looks like a pretty decent transport slash pad controller that uh, they say integrates seamlessly with the DAW. Uh, personally, I... My, my uh, master keyboard is the, the big, you know, Arturia, what is it, the Keylab 88. And that uh, bad boy integrates very, very well with my DAW, Ableton Live. But see, the thing is, I kind of, I'm a keyboard and mouse guy. I don't need a key, uh, like a piano keyboard to integrate with my transport. Uh, I feel like... Maybe it's just me, but uh, I, I feel like it it doesn't really it never really integrates well with the the DAW workflow, if that makes sense. Like I don't I don't need another point of uh control in terms of pressing play record. Uh but then again, it's closer to your hands when you're planning on playing a, a, some kind of rhythm on the pads and in this case what's nice i saw in the video there um it integrates really really well with the uh, 
pre-built kits that they have in, in Studio One. And uh, similar to Machine, they, uh, the pads will light up with a color coding that uh, basically tells you where the kicks are on the pads, the snares, the, 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 the chops, etc., etc. So maybe, just maybe they're trying to go the machine route, but with a better sequencer. So that could be an interesting lane, especially for the Studio One users. I don't know how big their market share is just yet, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a neat product. It looks like the, it has a good build. Very, very small, very... Um, it's not thick. Like, it, it really sits well on a small desk. So for us bedroom super producers, uh, this is a nice... Like, because the new machine is smaller than the studio, but it's still kind of big. Like, at some point, I wanted to buy, buy a machine just because it looks fucking awesome and... and if you're like me, you like just staring at gear while you're listening to your beat, just to get inspired, you know what I mean? But um, on my new output desk, like, I don't have a, lo a whole lot of space for a, a, a machine. Plus, I thought the MK3 looked awful, so I just passed on that one. But the studio one was really, really nice, but it's, it's so big, like, you, you literally have to make it, like, the center piece of your studio uh and i was not willing to do that just yet so interesting uh controller by uh presonus if you're uh, uh, a studio one user comment below and tell us uh how you like the daw uh why you chose that daw i'm just always interested in uh, discovering new daws you know so for, for people who know me, I've switched from Logic Pro X to Ableton Live a few years ago. Never looked back, but I'm always interested in uh, knowing what your workflow is like and what I could learn from your workflow. So that being said, let's move on to day number two in the uh, music tech review of the NAMM show. Um, the first thing that caught my eye is obviously the Akai Force, which... Well, <laughs> looks very much like an Ableton push to me, but it has this huge, um, this huge LCD screen at the top. Uh, I guess it locks in with their MPC. Uh, well, actually, the uh, the sequencer they built for the MPC uh, Renaissance uh, line, I guess. Um, they also say it integrates deeply with Ableton itself and Splice. So that's interesting. All right, so I just looked at the, the uh, Akai Force demo on the Music Tech site. And um, I got to say, it's a nice gadget, but I, I, I don't know that, you know, the uh, standalone mode will ev ever surpass what just a regular laptop will do. Like, I mean, the idea that uh, you can sync this device, which is a standalone device, with a laptop tells me that it's more of a Groovebox type thing. And uh, whenever I hear Groovebox, I hear, you know, performance. And um, if it is about performance, then it's not so much about studio work. And I'm really just a, a studio rat. Like, I don't... I'm not really looking to perform for anyone. So this device, I feel like, is kind of a hybrid between, you know, what you get with the push. Like, it's exactly the, the, the median point between the push and the laptop. So they, they kind of brought, you know, the two together with a limited feature set like you can uh you, you can make beats in standalone mode but uh then you have to export it to the ableton uh session format so basically you'll still need if you want to create a full track to go back to your laptop or computer and finish off the track so i mean personally i see absolutely no use for that kind of thing 
I mean, I would buy an Ableton Push way before that thing, just because I'm still gonna own two computers forever, like like a a, a studio, a main studio computer, which is an iMac in my case. But I still have, you know, a, a MacBook that I'll take on the road with me if I've, I'm visiting studios or or people in other cities and countries. So uh, I I. I I would very, very much be curious about the uh, the price of this thing. Um, let's head on to the uh, Akai website just to to see if they have an idea of the, what the price point is going to be. Because honestly, this kind of uh, tool has all of the bells and whistles the marketing team is going to need, but um, not too many. You know, wow, this site lo- loads extremely, extremely slow. Akai, you need to fix your website, honestly. Um, okay, so let's explore the force page just for a second here. See what's uh, on the menu. Again, loads extremely slow. I mean, Jesus. All these nice videos and all that, but all right. So here we are. Um, so remix, mashup, DJ, XY effects, Ableton Link. That's where you can actually use the force wirelessly to your Ableton uh, running um, computer and go back and forth and, and, I don't know, perform some of the phrases, go back. I don't know. I don't know how it integrates, but I really don't see any use for my uh, personal workflow. And then you have the warp, never miss a beat. I hope they have a great time-stretching uh, algorithm in there because if they don't, eesh, it's 2019, you know what I mean? And then Q-Mix, the perfect drop. Prep your mix with dedicated Q-assigned controls and a Q-Mixer. So I guess they really wanted to um, take the Ableton controller a step further. Uh, And don't get me wrong, I mean, this thing looks great. Um, It actually has much of the Ableton push's... um, feel in terms of uh you know the 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 materials the size of the uh the the buttons and and it looks like it has a great build i'll give them that um it's a nice format but i the whole screen thing like it takes us back to those you know remember those old uh you know 8 to 16 track digital recorders like studio in a box basically and um i don't know if it's just me but it seemed like that era in studio recording lasted i don't know like three four years maybe tops and uh people want flexibility so if you're gonna have a screen first of all it better be gorgeous and huge which they have uh but you also need, you know, an OS that'll integrate seamlessly in that screen size. And that's always been the challenge. So that's why I can't really go lower than, you know, a 13-inch retina display on an iMac, uh, on, a, on a MacBook Pro, personally. Because I need to see everything. Like, if, if, if I have a DAW or if I have a sequencer, I need to, to see my track in detail. Not just, you know red and yellow squares, like a bird's eye view type sequencer view. Uh, I need to see the waveforms because that's how I know what sound is on what, you know, track and everything. So with that being said, let me wrap this up about the Akai Force. I think uh, it's, it's a beautiful piece of gear. I'm just not sure who is going to use that and in what, and in what context. Uh, I feel like it's more of a live gig performance tool than anything else and if that's the case why do you need a screen like you're just going to look at the 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 color coding on the pads and 
you're going to basically know by heart where your sounds are and you're not going to need that screen. So maybe a bit overkill, um, kind of a Frankenstein. Uh, let's, let's take the best of two worlds and try to mix it up and, 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 and see who's going to figure out actually how to use that like in a very, very efficient manner. So moving on, uh, what else do they have in day two? Tierra Audio Boreal FET Compressor and Lava Preamp. Boring. I don't need any preamp. I mean, in a day and age where all I use is super processed samples and um, I don't record a whole lot of things, this is not my alley. I mean, and for my uh, bedroom super producers out there, I doubt that you're going to need anytime soon like this kind of compressor uh, when you can get pretty much any recreation of any, you know, analog, uh, you know, staples such as, you know, the 1176 and the, the Fairchilds of this world and all that. So if you're recording a whole lot of vocals and you want something that's going to saturate your vocals nicely, maybe... I don't know, but move on. Moving on to the uh, the Native Instruments Complete Control Thirty Two. Um, what's new about this one? They had. Let me check their website just for a second here. They obviously had an eighty eight because I looked at it. I wanted to buy it. It just didn't fit my uh, my output desk, which is a bummer because I I think it. I think these uh, controllers look gorgeous, especially with the uh, the color integration of uh, uh, you know the the different um, sample libraries that Complete comes with. So they had the forty nine. Um, what else did they have? Like I'm trying to figure out why would you need a thirty two. Or if they had a 32. So they have the micro size complete control M32 right here. So let's listen to the, uh, the demo real quick. I'll get back to you, give you my thoughts on this keyboard controller. All right, so I'm back. I've just listened to uh, some of what the guy from Native Instruments had to say about that keyboard. And from what I understand, I guess the smallest complete control keyboard they had out there before was an, a 49 key uh, keyboard. And uh, they wanted to go into the micro keyboard lane with that one. Guy says, if you want to throw it in a backpack and just ride on the road and you need something to play key, like chords on, that would be the... the um, the keyboard from the complete control line. But I was looking at it, either the guy is a, a, a very small human being, but it looked very long to me. Like, I don't know what kind of backpack you own, bro, but if you can throw that in a backpack and actually zip the whole thing up and, and go, uh, you got big backpacks. I personally... Don't believe this is a true micro MIDI controller. I think it's a bit too big. The other thing I, the other gripe I got with this design is the big machine knobs, like the big, like it's, I guess it's a three quarter height knob. And those knobs are just a pain in the ass when it comes to traveling because they'll, they'll get entangled with, you know, like the, the opening of the backpack, the zipper, the, the, the cables that you might have in your backpack. And I would be very, very worried to break one of these knobs if I were to travel with this keyboard. So too big. Uh, I wouldn't personally have put such high knobs on the, on the face plate there. I think that's... Um, that's not what you're looking for in a highly portable keyboard. Um, but if you want to start a home studio 
and you got a tiny desk in your bedroom or your basement, this is an amazing keyboard. Especially at the price point of, I believe, $170. Let me check back. Yeah, $170 can. So that's like $120 in US dollars. Uh, I don't think you can find a better uh, MIDI controller to start with. Especially, again, um, when you think about the integration with all of their native instrument products, contact, um, and then all of the, 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 the different soft synths that come with Complete, uh, I think that's probably... I, if I had to start all over again and I had like a few thousand dollars to um, throw on a, on a basic, you know, studio um, environment, I would buy this and a MacBook and complete. And that's everything you need probably with your Splice uh, monthly subscription. Just ask mom for $10 a month and there you have it. You have a complete... Uh, no pun intended, uh, studio package that will probably run you below uh, $2,000 US. Let me check. Uh, maybe $1,200 for, uh, for an old MacBook, you know, a 13-inch. And then you got this, $120 complete. That'll run you like seven to 800 So around that, you have a very, very, very good home studio uh so great great entry level keyboard in my opinion uh plus you have the nice little spring action uh keys there they're real keys uh it's not you know your um because i have like an m an m audio and i i have a bunch of friends who have those little you know akai but those are actual keyboard keys so you can really play something that makes sense uh, sometimes playing you know chords on these tiny tiny keys it's kind of a it's kind of a pain in the ass so great product um, let me know if you bought it what you thought of it I think it's a great product and um, okay, so then IK Multimedia came with the iLoud MTM. I had seen those in another blog post. Personally, I think they look horrible. Um, those three voice speakers kind of do nothing great usually. You know, they'll have poor mids, no bass. And um, from the looks of it, like they'll probably very, be very harsh sounding. They tout it as not only designed to have a flat frequency response, but it also comes with a calibration mic for setting up quickly in any room. Personally, I've never had any success with these kind of software calibration tools, whether it be for monitors or headphones. I feel like you, you, you'd be better off learning like from a, a, an intuitive perspective what it sounds like in your room how it translates to your car how it translates to your airpods or whatever tiny um earphones you've got and just make the best out of it so these uh they don't look pro they look like 1999 computer um computer uh, speakers and um, I feel like you would still need a sub for for the heavy duty you know sub bass tasks when it comes to mixing you know um, so I'm not interested moving on to the last entry in day two you've got the Novation 49 SL MK3 I used to own a 49SL MK2, and it was a great package. You had the pads, you had the knobs, you had the sliders or faders, and uh, but now it's just a, a Christmas tree. They've added, you know, the um, 
kind of the complete control uh, color coding of each and in, uh, each individual uh, key on the keyboard but it doesn't look quite as good as the complete control uh, it's always nice to have some pads on a uh, MIDI controller like a keyboard controller but in this case, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, eighteen, eighteen pads, small pads. They're not as wide as what you would expect. They don't seem to be quite square. Um, and again, they tout it as the complete workstation that's versatile, powerful, and will function perfectly as the heart of your setup. So, depending on the price point. It could be a contender to the uh, either the 49 or the uh, the 32 complete control keyboard controller. Obviously, not innovation might be a bit cheaper. Let me see if they have a. So it's going to be 540 pounds. So that right there tells me that it's not in the. Uh, in the same uh, category as the complete control therefore i wouldn't really consider it all that much especially if you're starting out and you want a good but cheap midi controller for your home studio um, i would pass let's move on to day three i'm going to try to <laughs> sorry about that speed that up a bit um I'm rambling a lot, but uh, hey, it's all fun and games, right? Next, we have the Loopmaster Loop Cloud, and I've uh, I've received an email a couple months ago about this Loop Cloud thing, and um, I really didn't see any. Let me just check real quick what they have to say about that. All right, so I've just uh, listened to the uh, the guy from Loop Masters show us what what you can do with the uh, Loop Master Cloud, and it's kind of interesting because what you can do is actually sequence hits or loops and have it play back in sync with your Ableton or your, basically your session. I think it integrates with most, if not all, major DAWs. And the guy had this, um, like this snare fill at uh, the end of two bars, I think. And what he could do is change the sound that was basically sequenced into the in in the loop cloud, and uh, preview any any sound from the Loopmasters library before buying the sound, which is kind of nice. But then again, Splice does it in a way that's uh, similar, where you can trigger samples with your keyboard keys uh, off the browser. Obviously, it's not in sync, perfectly in sync. But do you really need for it to be perfectly in sync before buying? Or you just need to figure out if the sound meshes with your composition? Personally, I don't think the whole perfectly in sync thing is uh, necessary. And uh, I would be very curious to see if it's sturdy and always on time when you have huge sessions playing or, you know, if you don't have that great uh, internet connection. So we'll see how that unfolds. Personally, I've never been a huge fan of Loopmaster products. I've bought libraries in the past, but uh, I feel like right now Splice the King king of the hill i'm still thinking about you know either trying for a month with sounds.com which is the uh the the response from native native instruments to splice uh it got me curious when i saw those first diplo sound packs then i had a second look today this morning before the podcast and i feel like they don't have as uh mature a sound library just yet so we'll have to see what other big names they can get on board and see if they... Because that's the thing. See, Splice, it's a lot of um, producers that aren't really well known. Uh, so I, I feel like with the native instrument uh, backed 
enterprise there, they could possibly get a lot bigger names on board with the project. Uh, so, so that's always interesting because basically you, you want the sounds from the best and you want the best sounds. So, and, and I've heard pretty much both, uh, all of the sounds from both Diplo sound sets and it was, uh, it was above the quality of most, you know, EDM influenced sound packs that you'll find on, on Splice. I thought it was amazing. That's why I wanted to get the subscription. At least, you know, subscribe for a month, get both Diplo packs. If I want to get out, I'll get out. But yeah, so uh, Loop Cloud, not not a fan of it. Uh, and because I never was all that into the Loop Masters uh, line of products, I, I'm probably not going to check it out. If you do and you find it super useful, let our uh, listeners know. Uh, but personally, I'm just, it's going to be a pass for me on that thing. Uh, and f- next product we have in the day three recap is the Ro- Roly Song Maker Kit. When I, if you know, if you've watched some of my videos, you know that I'm, I own both. I basically own a Roly Song Maker Kit without the transport control. Um, and I realized afterwards that when I produce like mock-ups on my phone, the app is a bit glitchy and it kind it kind of lags, especially when you have like three or four tracks playing. And I feel like that transport control might give you a, a better workflow so that you can just focus on the controllers instead of focusing on the phone for more much sorry, most of the sequencing. Uh, and playback um, tasks. And uh, yeah, so if you want to get into Roly products and uh, you've got a thousand dollars to spend, I guess, let me see what the song maker. Uh, yeah, so it's, it'll roughly be like 800, 900 bucks, 550 pounds. With the taxes, it's probably going to amount to something like that, which is quite expensive, okay? They are not cheap tools, and they are not, like, starting points to your uh, perfect home studio. But if you want probably the most expressive MIDI controllers out there, I mean... I've had, you know, MPCs. I've played with machines in several different studios, the 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 light pad blocks is very 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 responsive it's gorgeous it's a bit small but if that's what you're going for i wanted something small that i could have on my lap when i'm just you know producing a a, a song in front of the tv just fucking around and obviously the uh the seaboard uh the seaboard blocks the small one is just amazing i mean if you obviously you'll need those 5D integrated uh, presets either from the Noise app or Equator or whatever else uh, VSD that they have that integrates perfectly with those uh, the 4D or 5D technology. I, can't, I I never can seem to. Uh, I guess it's 4D four dimensions. Anyways, this keyboard is so so. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> this keyboard is the best extension of your brain when it comes to vibrato, pitch bending, and and sliding for effects. It's just so creative. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. So if you want to get the so- the the song maker kit and you have a laptop, I think that's just the best investment you'll make in terms of getting your music out of your brain and uh, to your fingertips and get very, very creative with your um, your basic workflow. So it's not a new product. I mean, I bought my, my stuff a year ago and they already had it. Um, 
I guess, oh, I guess it's more of the integration with Logic Pro that's a new thing. So for all my Logic Pro soldiers out there, uh, you can head out to the musictech.net website and check out the, the, the video there. And uh, next product on our list is the Korg Volca modular. Um, they say it's a, a semi-modular synthesizer with eight analog modules, a digital reverb effect, 16-step sequencer, and an astonishing five, uh, 50 patch points. The best part, it'll only set you back $200. Hmm. Let's see what they have to say about that one. All right, so Volca, Volca modular. I've just reviewed the... Uh, the demo at the uh, the NAMM show with the music tech guy. And I was worried that it wasn't a true modular system, meaning that you could only uh, patch together and sync up, you know, Korg devices from the Volca line. But it seems like you can absolutely integrate the Volca modular in any Euro rack type uh, modular system, which is a very, very nice... Um, approach, I guess. Um, I'm not too, um, you know, uh, literate in terms of uh, modular systems, but from the, what the guy said, it's it's a CV uh, transmission, transmission type thing for the different units to talk to one another or sync together. Um, so that's nice because I felt like it would have been a very closed modular system uh, if it were only about the Korg Volca little tiny units. So on that $200 uh, price point, you have, I think, only like the Volca modular box, like the, 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 the sound generator. I don't know that the rack and the cables come with it. Oh, may or maybe the cables come with it, but not the rack. So that needs to be checked out. Uh, but for $200, uh, any of those Volca little uh, boxes are really well worth the price, I think, especially if you're a, a, a knob twister, a, uh, someone who likes to, you know, mess around with physical objects like that. I'm going to finish my uh, NAM wrap up with uh, one last product because on the day four, there wasn't anything that I wanted to cover. Um, but this Apogee hype mic right there is very, very nice, I think. Right now, you're listening to me on, a, uh, on the um, ancestor, if you will, of the hype mic, which is the Apogee mic. And um, ever since I got this USB mic, I've gotten rid of my tube mics and my other con condenser mics. And I basically just use this both for, you know, tutorials podcasting uh, and even I've had artists record uh, you know demos on that mic and I've never been uh, dissatisfied with the results so I'm thinking that the hype mic is just going to be more of an entry level microphone uh, and they say they have they have a built-in analog compression on this uh, microphone so I, I, I'd be very curious to actually get one of those two and maybe change my, my mic for that hype mic. Uh, but USB is known, obviously, for their um, um, analog to digital converters. Uh, those mics, the mics that I have, and most likely the, uh, the new hype mic, are no different. Uh, they are very, very transparent very um, clear, warm sounding. I was expecting something a lot less, you know, full sounding from a USB mic when I first got the, the first Apogee mic. So if, again, you want to complete your home studio setup and you want to be able to record your friends, uh, you know, both rappers and singers, I mean, it's a very, very uh, uh, good all-around mic talking from my, uh, the experience I have with my mic, but I'm sure it's on par in terms of quality, uh, the new hype mics. So you definitely want to check that out. Let me just 
tell you real quick how much it'll go for. Um, doesn't say on the second page. Let me go just real quick to the Apogee website. So, where's that hype mic? Okay. Yeah, so we have, you know, and they're targeting this mic to, um, you know, up and coming artists. So I, I find that very interesting because it tells you that it's uh, studio quality material right there. Um, so scrolling down on the page. Okay, so there's the Mic Plus, which I guess is the new version of, uh, no wait, the Mic Plus is a bit lower quality somehow. Oh, it was in introduced in the in 2017. So it's the, the the hype mic is basically the recreation with better components. Um, well, better components being that three selectable analog compression modes, and it, it'll, it'll retail for 350 US dollars. So that's a pretty good price point, especially since you have those compression settings the absolute quality of um you know uh conversion with the apogee converters and uh you have my word <laughs> that my apogee usb mic is absolutely great so this one's going to be awesome as well very compact from what i can see so it looks like a great product. Um, if I ever need to change mics, I'm certainly going to use, uh, look at at least a hype mic uh, before getting something better for the podcast. So with that being said, uh, I hope I uh, did bore you a bit. I, I know I went on a while with uh, my analysis of all these products, but I feel like it's important that you hear it from an old cat like me who's seen, you know, the analog days and the you know, the, the, the ADAT and DAT recording days, the 8-track days. I've seen it all, basically. I've been in the game for 20 years. And um, sometimes you learn things the hard way that actually translate into the digital era. And if I can explain to you why such and such tools are great because we needed to move in that direction... Uh, in terms of technology and workflow, uh, I'm, I'm sure it'll be of value to you. So you don't have to go like me and bun buy a bunch of useless studio tools that'll run you for, for a few hundred or even a few thousand dollars. And just to realize that it does not integrate into your workflow or it just slows you down. And, you know, music making nowadays, especially in the computer age, is such a... Um, it needs to be so fast that you can't buy gear that'll slow you down. You just can't. So unless you know you like uh, for gear to pile up in your studio and you just like to stare at it without really using it all that much, maybe that's for you. But personally, I like to streamline my stuff like every other month. If I don't need something, I'll sell it. I don't, I'll, I don't hesitate one second if, if I don't use it, it's either out of the studio and into some kind of storage room somewhere or it's sold. So um, that's why I do and I will do more of these gear reviews so that you can actually invest your money where you need to invest it to, you know, work fast, work efficiently and ultimately get more and more creative. So uh, thank you for uh, listening to the first uh, episode of the podcast. Um, I, uh, I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. I want you to comment on what you liked and didn't, didn't like. Uh, let's talk gear because uh, we're all nerds out here and we love to talk about gear, don't we? So on that note, uh, have a great week. Today is Monday. And uh, now that I'm done with this, I'm going to try to get a good little track for the tv show i'm working on within an hour i need to get uh, the little one from the daycare not the daycare but the uh from school so uh 
hopefully in an hour, I'll be able myself to craft a nice little idea that I'll be able to mix down and submit to the client tomorrow afternoon. And uh, see, that's the thing. Us as bedroom super producers, time is of the essence. So whenever we can, you know, work extremely fast and get great quality professional results within that time frame, that's what we are going for. So again, thank you for uh, listening. Subscribe to the channel because I'm going to um, pump out a lot of these uh, nerd talks. So hopefully if you like them, I'll have a lot more for you guys. And um, yeah, keep producing, keep making bangers.